I think we're already live, so. <laughs> All right, we are live. It is a uh, great night. It's a Friday night, and we are excited to be with you. I hope you guys are ready for tonight because I've been excited about this one for quite a few weeks. Um, this has been a, a fun project. Music Can't Be Quarantined started as a project to help local musicians, and we have. We have raised almost $15,000, right, Jeremy? Huh, good, so, right. Um, for local musicians, and it has been awesome. All due to your guys' support, you guys have come and stacked up and got online, put in your uh, bids to help, and uh, it has been amazing. We've uh, really helped a lot of musicians who can't uh, be out working right now. So what is this all about? <clears throat> musicians who have been doing this for their livelihood forever, right now there are no or very little amount of venues for them to be out and play and do anything. So we got together, me, Jeremy, and Jason, and we're like, what can we do to help? Well, we'd already started this <clears throat> online kind of television show uh, thing, and we're like, well, what if we figure out a way to fundraise for that? And we brought in a lot of great acts. You guys, we found a, a fundraising app that doesn't take a big percentage. So that means all the dollars that you guys raise tonight and for every show that we have done go to the artists. And it has been really, really cool to, to have that happen. It has been awesome because, like I said, this is what these people do for a living. And right now they don't have a place to do it. There were acts that we talked to that were actually doing sound checks for shows, and before the show started, they were told those shows were canceled. Wow. Restaurants, bars, clubs, you all know it. It is all a different world right now, and those are not venues that people are able to play in. So we're hoping to see that come, come back, obviously, but it's kind of expanded to be a little further right now. I was recently talking to, we've got bands now that are scheduling out for the rest of this year that are going to be some of the national acts. Some of the biggest uh, names in bluegrass and acoustic music have been contacting us because this is a cool way for them to be able to get out in front of you guys and, uh, and like I said, pay, pay the bills. This is, this is hard. You know that. It's hard to pay the bills right now. So we're hoping to see that uh, continue to go. We're real excited about tonight's concert because we got in the world famous Rodney Dillard. I am uh, really, really <laughs> world legendary. famous, <laughs> legendary, world famous. There's like nine people that know this guy. And I'm <laughs> so excited for those people to hear you tonight. Two yeah. of them are tuning in tonight. <laughs> yeah, there are nine people, and none of them have their green card. That is. <laughs> but so they have an internet connection, so they're they do watching have, right yeah, now. Yeah, they have an internet connection, so they're watching right now. <laughs> Rodney Dillard, and uh, you know, this whole this has been the Dillards for the past few years of three plus a few others and they're going to tell you more about an album that's coming out but Rodney was in the Dillards was later on doing stuff with some of the greatest uh, in that rock and roll uh, acoustic rock California move that was going on and he's all part of that I learned more every time I'm around this guy about music in general and I'm really excited about tonight so uh, I guess I won't talk too much more about it. Please We're going to get you started. Okay, I won't. <laughs> Jeremy says no more. We're going to be, me, Jeremy, and Jason are excited to be honorary Dillards tonight. So we'll get it started now with Rodney Dillard and the Dillards. What a wonderful introduction. The yeah. way you could talk about macaroni for three hours. Good. You're really good. You should good. do this for a living. Yeah, <laughs> that's wonderful. Well, this is the first time that we've done anything like this, and I wanted to do it with some folks who uh, who I, I really like. They're good people here, the Chapmans, and they have a great store. And they're doing a good things for, for pickers who are out there who are really hurting right now. I know there is a lot of people who are. Uh, but I really relate to the, the players who's devoted their lives to perfecting their craft. And uh, I just, uh, we hope that things get better. And uh, we're just going to try to do some songs that, uh, that I know and uh, maybe make you feel a little better about your life and make you a little, a little happier. And Oh, you there who are watching on, a, on one of those sound bars, you need to move over into the center, otherwise you're missing that pseudo surround sound. A little more. Yeah. No, she'll move over too. Okay, that's good. You got it. We're going to start off with one here that we did. It actually got nominated for a Grammy, and it's called The Darlin' Boys. It's about the Darlin' Boys from the Andy Griffith Show, and uh, here it is.
Orland boys. Nailed it. The story of Nailed the Orland it. boys. <laughs> the story of the Orland boys and the James brothers all sort of associated to the same area in Missouri. And uh, of course, that's where we're from, the Ozarks. And, well, some uh, of us. Well, some of us are. If I have a chance now, and I would take your time out there to introduce the folks that are up here. Uh, of course, right here on my right, left, right, yeah, right, right. This is my wife of what? How many? 38 years? Close to it. You know, a man is not complete until he's married. Amen. <laughs> then he's finished. <laughs> <laughs> we better play gospel yeah, to get over that. Yeah, just, <laughs> But uh, Beverly, when I met her, it was in Canada, and she was like, I don't know, in her late 20s, and she was standing on the stage in front of about 10,000 people, and the lights were shining down, and she was in this long dress and this, uh, this black hair and had 10,000 people dancing, clogging, and she played her banjo, and I looked up, and I went, <laughs> <laughs> and we've been married ever since. Uh, well, yes, we have. Right? It was love at first sight on his part. <laughs> <laughs> Over here on my extreme, no, I'll just say on my left. Oh. <laughs> uh, is it okay if I say you're on my left? Uh, is that sure. a good word with you? Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, uh, this is Jim Glaspie, and Jim is from Texas, and he was, uh, you'll have to help me with this, you were twice state champion. Texas flat top champion. And a kazoo player. A and kazoo player. Texas, <laughs> and, yeah, you Na were. 1988 know. National Dobro champ. Yeah. He, he, he's very talented, and I've always tried to surround myself with people Smarter than me and more talented. At least I got half of it right. <laughs> but uh, Jim is, a, you know, he's a good player. And, uh, uh, what do we want to do now? Let's do. Uh, well, who, let's. Uh, well, who are the Darling Boys? Oh, the Darling Boys with the Dillards. <clears throat> it's, you know, we've had a very schizophrenic career, you guys. It's been, <laughs> we're known and as the continues. Darling Boys, and we're known as the Dillards, who, back in the early days, uh, back when we were operating on kerosene instead of electricity, uh, we uh, started a group in Missouri, and we headed for California, got out there, kids leaving the Ozarks, one wheel trailer, and $9.87 we left home with. And of course, being from the Ozarks, we weren't used to large sums of money like that, and we ran through it in about three months. <laughs> but we finally worked our way out there, and, and <clears throat> as uh, it would have it, we ended up on the Andy Griffith shows. Is it, that's a long story and for another time. But on the Andy Griffith Show, we played this family called the Darlings. You know, the, the, the family of vegetables that sort of <laughs> <did their experience. laughs> And uh, so we went on to do other things. And of course, we would come in once a year and do all those shows. But we were out doing college concerts and we was doing all the folk shows at the time, Hoot and Nanny and the Art Link Letter tours with all the folk people, you know, the ones who, uh, who would sing Old Blue like, I had an old dog, <laughs> and his name was Blue. And I bet you five dogs. <laughs> and they were singing about dogs up there in the north, and we didn't feel about dogs that way. Well, how did you feel about dogs? Well, we felt that dog, I grew up, I was seven years old before I realized the dog wasn't my brother. <laughs> <laughs> but we had, it brings up a good point. We just ought to do this song. This song has been a very popular song. And the folk people took it and, and sort of turned it into an, an actor studio version. I love some. An opera. I, I, think, yes. I think he's doing this in E, is this correct? Yeah, we'll do it in E. Is that okay with you guys? It's close, no. Yeah, yeah just yeah, nice. That's like it's just not sure what it is, but I'm used to do it in A. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, about well, an old dog. it's about an old dog that dies in the third verse. <laughs> and uh, I have my own reason for doing this song, and it's all about the death of a dog I had, but it was a sale dog. <laughs> But, uh, we're going to do it like we do it. And i got to tell you how it happened. We were invited to the Newport Folk Festival. The first thing out of the shoot when we got to L.A. And here we went to the Newport, up there with all the fonfi fonts are, you know, and they're the doing fonfi Yeah, they're fonfi fonts. <laughs> cool. They're all the intellectuals, you know. And here we come out of those arcs. And I was sitting there back with the guitar, and this person came up with long hair and a dog. They always have a dog with a kerchief around its neck. You can spot that. You, know. <laughs> you even know they're an intellectual or they're from Canada. <laughs> <laughs> so... So this person comes up to me and she says, well, well, what do you think about the existential dilemma? I said, I don't know. I was raised Pentecost. <laughs> she just kind of looked at me and walked away. And <clears throat> gosh, nobody approached me much that rest of the night. So. But anyway, this is the way we do Old Blue. Well, I had no dog. His name was Blue. Five dollars, he's a good dog. 
Well, I bred old blue to a dog named Green, and all the pups were aquamarine. song that you haven't worked the harmonies out of. <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay. That was exactly the way I, I remembered it. Well, and that's exactly the way I used to do it. Is it? Well, I got a little um, taken up by the dog sounds over there, and I, you know, I couldn't find myself. You started talking about a dog, and then he just, it was there. Well, I was trying to do that folk thing, you know. They had to have an emotion to what they were doing, so they could have everybody quiet so you can hear a pin drop. Oh, but, uh I never grew let's up. Try to get him. <laughs> <laughs> let's not. Uh, uh, let's do something else here. What? Uh, oh, I know a good one. This is what, what when I first moved to uh, to Branson, I left LA back in the I forgot back in the old days. Lower I'm, Alabama? Huh? Lower Alabama? LA. LA. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, came home uh, and uh, bought a home, bought a place. Uh, just outside of Branson, overlooking the lake down there. Beautiful, pristine, beautiful things. You'd walk out of the back porch, and there would be the birds tweeting, like in a Disney movie, you know. And uh, I woke up 37 years later, looked out, and there was, well, we had been mauled. There was a mall here, and a mall there, and a mall over here, and a mall there. And I thought, my goodness, what has happened? And all these little franchises started popping up, you know, all the fast food joints. And I thought, what has happened to this? What has happened to this? What's her name? Had the song "Pay Paradise" and put up a parking lot. Oh, Joni. I know what you're talking about. That's a great song. Yeah, yeah. it sure is. Should be revised. <laughs> <laughs> but it's too late. <laughs> so I thought, well, we ought to write a song about this, and we did. Me and Bruce Haynes wrote this. It's called "There Goes the Neighborhood." <laughs>
nosy neighborhood. There goes the neighborhood. There it goes. It's gone. All right, hold the applause, Dan. Okay. <laughs> I, can hardly, I can hardly hear myself. Thank you. <laughs> and, uh, but, uh, yeah. oh. This is a very interesting way of doing music these days because of the fact that nobody can get close to each other anymore. And uh, I don't well, know like if this is marriage. it. <laughs> <laughs> what did he say? He said, talk like he's married. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's what I'm talking. This gives you an opportunity to be people and not stand up here and go, and then I wrote, and then I said, and look at me. Oh. <laughs> but it gives you a chance for people to really act, and you see people uh, as, as real people and not some sort of talking head uh, reading some, from a script, which... Uh, You're real? Teleprompter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, could you move the teleprompter a little closer again? Yeah. But it, it's just interesting to do it this way. This is new for me, and at my age, it's 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 an experience, and I'm trying to overcome it. <laughs> but uh, is there uh, any requests from anybody? I, I haven't got the chance to look as of yet. Is know. there anybody people, watching? Okay, so people, I hope there's people watching. Um, so one thing that we can do is, I talked to you about this earlier, is if people are wanting to do requests, please post them in there. Obviously, we would really love to see it. If you donated something, we'll be definitely looking at that on the fundraiser account. Again, that fundraiser.com. Uh, and slash, what is tonight's? Dillard, oh, tip, jar. Dillard tip Jar. Oh, there you go. It's called <laughs> fundraiser.com slash Dillard Tip Jar. Uh, get on there and do that. They can leave a comment on there if you want to do that. We'll definitely be able to uh, monitor that. I think Becca's in the back right now looking at those. If you have any requests, make sure to do that. I know one of them was tell him to quit. So, uh, <laughs> and we'll actually do requests for things we don't know. There you go. <laughs> Speak for yourself. Nice. <laughs> I don't do Rocky Top and oh. I don't do Louie Louie. <laughs> Dueling <laughs> instruments. But if you put enough money that. in yeah. the jar. <laughs> <laughs> But it is, it, it, this is a real, boy, you guys really have a beautiful uh, music store here, too. Oh, we yes. talked about we it much. We gutted it during the... We did. We did a we full We shut down uh, for a month, and we tore everything out. Started yeah. over. You've got, you just got something for everyone. We tried. Yes. Even, okay. even something for, you know what's cool? Uh, this is actually really, really cool. Rodney has shot, stopped in at the shop a couple of times to pick up random stuff. stuff. Yeah. And it, it's, it's awesome to have somebody, you know, obviously all of you guys' stature, to come into the shop. And we've been fortunate to be able to do that. But then you come in and hang out, tell me stories. And, and that's probably my favorite part of this, this store has been the fact that we've had some of the greatest people, uh, musicians and just people, come in, talk and chat and tell stories and, you know, Obviously, we we need that that kind of social interaction because this kind of doesn't really work much anymore. It's, it's a lot it harder. It works for me. Yeah. <laughs> this this reminds me of the alternative. It does be the alternative. This reminds me the days of the old Cracker Barrel where people <clears> would sit down in the country stores and they'd always sit around the Cracker Barrel. There was a Cracker Barrel. And the old timers would sit there and they'd talk and they'd reach into that Cracker Barrel. My dad used to tell me this and eat crackers till the store owner finally said, Hey guys, stop eating my crackers. <laughs> I'm trying to sell them. <laughs> Is that really where that comes from? I'll yes. be honest with yeah. you. Yeah. Of all the years, I had no idea what no, that was. No, it's not a fast food chain restaurant. No. <laughs> My grandparents well, they, they actually like had one in North Carolina. It's also not a fast food chain. It is every it is, time I've been there, it's pretty long. <laughs> 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 but I like their biscuits. I, yeah, the biscuits uh, incorporate. I'm kind of big on it. Hey, I never met a biscuit I didn't like. <laughs> I have. Uh, I didn't get. It looks like Becca told me that we do have a request, and I don't know. I saw Dooley. I saw. Uh, okay, oh, so Becky says uh, white. What was it? White wicker, wicker, rock. wicker rocking chair. Wicker rocking oh, chair. Oh my goodness. Yeah. And then I okay. also saw one just it. now for uh, the whole world round, which we'll get to. That. I know. I think that was on your list, right? Maybe. Well, sure, yeah. we can do it. Okay. Yeah. Whenever you want. Those two are also so far been requested. So. <laughs> okay. That's that's. A, if I grab my phone, it is not because I'm being rude. It's because Love I'm it. getting these do messages. Normally, we're not having to be here. So. Um, oh, I also see one for close the door lightly. Good song. It Good is. song. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'll try to pick and choose over that. Let me think about it. Well, we could do whole world round, but uh, I'll probably just do it solo because I don't know if everybody knows. Do you know the vocals on that that you got? Um, yeah, kind of. Hey. Should we sing them back there, and if it works, we could come up <laughs> <No>. here? <laughs> this is written by Mitch Jane, one of the, the bass player in the original Dillard's. 
over a round. Yeah. yeah. And of course, everybody asked me about the Dillards. How long has the Dillards been? Well, I guess maybe the Dillards uh, had started when probably maybe I was a, maybe five or six, maybe seven, and I was sitting on a pond bank fishing, and it started with me writing my first song. And I can remember just bits of it. It was like. I don't want to go to school. I don't want to <laughs> take a bath. I don't want to take a dose of turpentine for my worms. <laughs> and, of course, it really went downhill from there. And <laughs> later on, uh, I, I, got, I got started on the ukulele. And uh, from there, we went on to the guitar. My brothers and everybody got involved. And my mother had a great way of getting the kids to play. She had an old guitar, and she sat behind the couch, and she went out to the garden or somewhere to do something. She says, now, you kids don't touch that guitar. <laughs> Good philosophy. So the minute she was out of the house, we were scrambling for it. And I would have become a much better guitar player, but my brother took it apart and couldn't never put it back together again. <laughs> so that ended my lead guitar career. But uh, what are we doing? Oh, whole world around. <laughs> this is written by Mitch Jane and Joe Stewart. And it's kind of... Maybe too late for this song, but it's still, a lot of people maybe would like to have this fantasy. Not what you think. <laughs> I'm going to go out there and be alone and get taken out at the Alamo. <laughs> Why? What a purpose. <laughs> right, we've got a lot of requests on our official page here. We've got There's a Time, Evo Walker, Groundhog, Ozark Knights. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Biggest Bless that ever. person. There are a bunch. Dooley, of course. I gotta, there's actually a couple fans out there, honey. Hey, there's people. That's good. They remember. <laughs> <laughs> I, I am. I'm very thankful for that. Well, uh, okay, we could do those. You know what I'd like to do before that? I'd like to get in sort of the, here's the old Tommy portion of our show here. Oh. And uh, what I would like to do is bring Jim Glaspie and Beverly 
in that order, and Beverly gets her banjo, while Beverly goes, goes to her to banjo, banjo. <laughs> Jim, uh, when, when Jim was traveling with us a lot, he would uh, he would step out and do this song, and people just loved it. It's that, that old feel of what mountain music sounded like and what Flat and Scruggs and all those guys encouraged the young folks to get interested in this kind of music. And uh, it's just Jim and a guitar, but it's so pretty. And so neat. It just brings back all those old memories. Kind of like looking into a fireplace on a cold night. You reflect on your ancestry. I don't know where I'm going with this. You got it, Jim. <laughs> Thank you, Rodney. You're welcome. Hold you 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 it down back there, guys. applauding out there. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty pretty. Uh, Beverly, can you, you yes. got that banjo? Yes. Yeah. Beverly is actually from North Carolina. Met her years ago. We were playing a international festival in Canada, wasn't yes, it? Yes, the one you spoke about earlier where, you know, I was up there with my long dress and I was young. And uh, I told him it was... Um, a weak moment. I had just been on a solo tour for two months, and that's the, <laughs> that's the only way that uh, he got me falling in love. I met her, and I, uh, we had to go across Canada. We were doing a tour, and immediately after talking to her all night until 4 in the morning, sitting there in, in a crowd of people, I immediately went to a restaurant and sat in fresh jello. <laughs> that's how I remember that first encounter. Thank you. That's a lovely memory of me. So when I see squash jello, I think of you. Oh, thanks, honey. Well, I'm going to do a little North Carolina claw hammer banjo that I learned from the great Tommy Gerald. And just one of the old fiddle tunes. And uh, 
This one was actually from an old English song called Payday in the Army, and in this country they changed it to The Soldier's Joy. Where's the... You better get up here, boy. Uh, do you mind if I stand? Remember this? <laughs> yeah. Can't get that seat right. Like this. Let me bring that point up about that. What it had in the early days of bluegrass, people were so intent on getting perfection and making sure that every note was right so everybody would admire them for being the musician they were. <laughs> they would get on stage and, and they'd get this look on their face like they weren't enjoying themselves. And it had to be just perfect and everything. And to me, that kind of took some of the fun out of the music when it, when it became a, a musician's competition rather than enjoyment. If that makes any sense. I, I get you. I mean, you know, call Please me. Tonight, I, I am fully pages. competing. Me and you. Okay. <laughs> me and you. That's the way it's going to go down. <laughs> <laughs> two yeah. Two, yeah, two men enter, one leaves. <laughs> <laughs> but do we get to leave with the guitar? <laughs> <laughs> What's left of them? Yeah. Yes. Oh, All right, I got some more to... To put in here for requests. Somebody again. making a list here? Well, no, we're just going to keep throwing them around. Uh -oh. We're just going to talk about them. We're just going to talk all about yeah. them. We do have a request for Dooley, Whole World Round, uh, Close the Door Lightly, uh, Ebo Walker. I see. That one makes me cry. Ebo Walker does? <laughs> yeah. Well, I think, I think it was Ebo Walker that made him cry, really. Uh, Old Man at the Mill. Hmm. Oh, that's been a long oh, time. Muddy Bottoms, uh, Doug's Tune, 
Salty Dog, and I Wish Every Day Was Like Mayberry. In case you don't know, he knows a lot of songs, so we will get as many as we can. He doesn't remember them. He yeah, actually, he he, he's, he's kind of, you know, but he, he may remember. That's really not true, George. <laughs> <laughs> I represent that. <laughs> Well, that's a lot that's of requests, and that's, that's a lot of uh, of the old stuff we used to. I think we can do them all at once. Well, we can. Yeah. I a mashup? Is that you what mean, they like call it? Like the last song we just did? <laughs> yeah. You know what I can't wait to get is all the letters and, and comments on these deals. With You can't respect Rodney any more than how you treated him on that show. And I'm going to go, yeah, that's, a, that's exactly what he deserved. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I like this show. <laughs> yeah, I do. Uh, uh, hold up. Uh, there, there is a time. That'd be a good one. That is a great one. Can I? It, would anybody be interested in hearing how this came about? Oh, yeah. Let's just do it. You could all, <laughs> you could all, you could all switch over later on how to make cornbread or whatever you watch on YouTube. But uh, the, the guy in the green chair wants it. Wants to hear about it. The one in the easy chair. Yep. Yep. Oh, the sleeping. one there with uh, the bad haircut. <laughs> I do yeah. find it weird that he's got a green chair and a pink carpet, but <laughs> no. whatever. Yeah. That's what you're gonna do. We're not making fun of you, sir. It's no. Okay. <laughs> Mainly the Don't be upset. None of us have any room to make he's fun like, of anyone. I knew this TV was watching me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. I've got to tell you quickly how this. How uh, there's a there's another verse to this song that that uh, was written later. When uh, a few years ago, when when uh, the Dirt Band decided to do another uh, "Circle Be Unbroken," I think a "Circle Be Unbroken" forty-seven. It was my favorite. It remains edition. unbroken, yeah. I believe. <laughs> Thank you, John. Thank you. Yeah, John McEwen, <clears throat> very dear friend, and and uh, he asked me if I would come and sing this song and get Ricky Skaggs to sing a a, a verse with me, and. Uh, so okay, I'm down there in the hotel, getting ready to go over to uh, to the studio and uh, Randy Scruggs' studio at the time, and uh, to do that song. And I get a call from John as I'm walking out the door, and John's like this. He says, uh, "Could you write another verse? We record in 45 minutes." Uh, I said, "Yeah." So I immediately called up Mitch, and I had a napkin there, and I wrote on the napkin. I said, "Mitch, we got to have this song done in 40." I'm walking out the door. I've got to go over there and cross town and record this. I said, you write a verse, I'll write a verse, and we'll uh, compare them, whoever has the best verse. So just as I was getting ready to run, I, I wrote mine down. I said, okay, I called Mitch. I said, Mitch, you got yes? And he said, yep. I said, read them. And we read them. And we had written the same <clears throat> lines except for the last verse. Which is weird. You think that's weird? I, well, it's not oh, normal. You, you, I don't want to bog down in this, but you, you must define weird years. to me, you know. <laughs> you must define weird. I guess. You're, you got a point. Yeah, on my head. Put a hat on it and go home. I know. <laughs> uh, so this is There's the Time with the additional verse on the uh, Circle Being Broken. <laughs> Days will pass like summer storm. Winter winds will follow after. There is love, and love is love. There is a time for us to wonder when time is young and so we woods are greener over oh, yonder. The path is new. Spring. 
comes the last verse that we wrote, which I don't think was weird. Time is like a rolling river with no regrets as it moves on around the bend, a shining morning to greet the friends we thought were There you have it. <laughs> <laughs> I think we need to clarify. It is not that the verse was weird. It was great. It is not weird. It's just weird that you came up with the same verse at the same time. That is strange and different. Unusual. Unusual. Okay. Let's go with unusual. I think I chose the wrong word. No, weird unusual. was right. Unusual. But I have one question to ask you, since you're very knowledgeable. Does I come before E in weird? <laughs> I have no idea. Huh? I'm before E except after C. C. Uh, that's all what I always learn, too. <laughs> A-E-I-O-U. A-E-I-O-U. Here we go. Back to old school, guys, <clears throat> where you actually learn something. Uh, I know what I'd like to do. This is a song. Uh, if you, you'd like to go into A, we'll do Doug's tune. I'd like to tell you how this song came about because a lot of times you just don't sit down and start writing. Well, I'm going to write a song now. Da -da 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 -da. If they come about in odd ways. I remember one episode that we were working on, and we were all in the dressing room, well, not the dressing room, we were in the, where they do the makeup, and, and Andy was in the chair, and Lee Other was slapping the makeup on Andy, troweling him up and everything, and uh, Doug and I were sitting there. Do we do this in A or do B flat? Which is it? A. Okay. And uh, I was sitting there doing this. And uh, I think I'd stolen that from some folk song, and... Uh, and uh, I was just sitting there doing that. And, and all of a sudden, my brother started doing this. this. And he said, what is that, guys? And, uh, of course, Douglas and I looked at each other and did Daryl and my other brother, Daryl. <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> and he said, well, you know, that's really good. That's a nice tune. He said, let's do it on the next show. And he said, we'll call it Doug's tune. I have to say, that intro was actually one of the first intros I learned on the guitar. It was probably one of the, to me, I thought it was a quintessential bluegrass intro. Just hearing that, you know. <laughs> that ec extra deal with that. Uh, hey, you do that better than me. Well, <laughs> hey, I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> He but said, it's him or you. But seriously, that was like, it was, it was a game changer for, for a, a guitar intro. Because there's not a lot of guitar intros in bluegrass. I mean, there's strung in patterns and that kind of stuff. But it's a banjo tune with a guitar intro. I thought that was one of the coolest things when I was well, learning Well, you, you know, I stole that from about I have 50 other people who were doing the same lick. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll tell you, this is all I can remember, but, but it was... Raspberries, strawberries, fine <laughs> wines that we brew. Here's to the girls from the countryside to say hello to you. <laughs> Bluegrass what? flick? No. <laughs> I stole it. There you go. But uh, since you... Oh, I'm so out of tune, guys. That's okay. We'll take your time. You know what I'm going to do is to Why don't you kick it off and you guys Punk, play? Sure. It? Punk, yeah. The more you tip, the more in tune he will be. So. <laughs> hey, don't push it. <laughs> I don't know if I can do that. But yeah, kick it off and you guys get uh, get, get a nice uh, hefty. Uh, what is? How do we do it on the show? Leave the diddle out. Okay, I'll try to. <laughs>
got to do the Rodney Dillard leg. That I stole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'd like to say that was my own particular. It is. I think, it I think the statute of limitations yeah. is beyond past, yes. so you can say it's your own. I think it oh, is. Oh, okay. I'm past the statute of limitations. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, I heard that. Once. It's very funny, but I think back, I was looking at some of the old stuff on YouTube, the jazz stuff, Benny Goodman, those guys. That that Lester Flatlick started way beyond that with Benny Goodman and the jazz guys. True. <clears throat> yeah. And it was just adapted. Absolutely. I mean, most things are. I mean, it's all about putting music together. Music is just... We're all sharing the same notes. That's right. We only have 12. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, really? Well, well I've heard some bands yes. that sounded like they had more than that, <laughs> <laughs> that they made up the notes. Uh, yeah, it's true. All the, like I always said, the masters, uh, Beethoven and all those dudes back there, they did it all. All we have now is texture and, uh, and uh, characterization. It's true. So that's our music lesson for today. <laughs> By the way, first time Beethoven was called a dude right there. <laughs> <laughs> Beethoven, yeah, you know that dude. Yeah, that dude. yeah, that dude. <laughs> That was because of me. <laughs> doodliness. Your doodliness. Yeah. Oh, what was the other? Dooley. 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 Oh, that one has been very, very good to me over the years. And Mitch. I got to tell you that Mitch, Jane, and I wrote most of these tunes together. Uh, uh, we just did. We, it was one of those situations. I don't know how songwriters get along. I know in Nashville, a lot of times, four or five will write a song and by committee, and they come up with a camel. <laughs> Camel. But uh, yeah, you know, everybody thought that camel was put together by oh. by committee. Oh yeah. Man, that is old know. stuff. Right yeah, there. <laughs> See, I'm too young for that. Uh, <laughs> Way but too uh, young. Uh, Mitch and I would write something, and, and uh, then we'd get in there and just yell at each other and say, "No, I don't like that. I don't like that." Well, you write like you write the newspaper. Or your tune sounds like nursery rhymes. Ba -ba 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 -ba. <laughs> and then we'd come out with things like Dooley and, and different tones. But this was written, Mitch and I were, and Dean and Doug were playing. There was a new place in Hollywood down on Santa Monica Boulevard, this huge place that had five different showrooms in it. And uh, the Everly Brothers had bought this place and put it together. They had this dream, Phil and Don did, of putting acts in different rooms, right? And we happened to be... Uh, in the rooms with the, uh, there was a group called the Olympics then, which was a, a black group of just fantastic. And uh, Mitch and I were sitting in a dressing room and they were uh, on stage and, and, and we were listening and that inspired us to write Dooley. Well, not the lyrics, but the melody. I mean, that's a weird thing, but anyway, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Try to give you a little information out there and you turn the set to something else. <laughs> and didn't Porter have a hit with that flip side of Green Green Grass? Yeah, Porter had. And, uh, Kingston Trio were the first people to cut that. And then uh, then uh, who else did? Somebody else did. Oh, Grandpa Jones. He did it. There I go. And I worked Drop with names Buck, there, Rodney. I worked uh, with Buck Trent for all those years. And we used to do it. And he would go play the Opry. And he'd call us, and he'd go, now, now, let's just run that one more time. And then he'd go, I'm doing Dooley on the Opry. Ka-ching, ka-ching, ka-ching. <laughs> you know, i got to say, Buck is a dear friend, and oh, that yeah. man is, I guess, in his 80s now. Yes. He? And he is still going strong. He's got yes, more energy than a young man. Yeah. He's still running the show down there. He is, and he plays. You know, he, he's still got it. And he really has a passion for what he does. And you, you got to you got to forgive old people because if you really love the music, you'll stay in it till you you know they're putting you in the coffin. It's like even uh, the guy who wrote Hokey Pokey. You know they uh, they were putting him in the coffin and they put his left leg in and then the chaos started. <laughs> no 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 no. Because he what? did the hokey pokey, that's why. You got it. <laughs> and you're from Texas and you got it. <laughs> I get what that's all about. Uh, <laughs> that's what it's all about. Yeah. That's right. You guys are too quick. So what were we? Oh, Dooley. Yeah, yeah bitch. Uh, Dooley. Yeah. This is actually written about, and you folks down in Salem who <clears throat> remember back then, there was a fella who did what he did about making moonshine, but we changed the name to protect our family. <laughs> and uh, it was written about a real guy from Salem, Missouri, Dent County, or Booger County. I can't remember. One of the counties. And uh, it's called Dooley. I've said enough. <laughs> Thank you. 
That's kind of the way he talks to me. <laughs> <laughs> you like, know, is that love a lines, yeah. statement? No, no, I didn't say anything. No, it's like it's it just, shows the importance of the work. Yeah, it shows yeah. the importance of the work, work that he was doing. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, people back then in, in the Ozarks, they, they, the story about old Evo, what I'm not going to do tonight, but uh, <laughs> you know, his deal was a lot of those guys would go out and they always kept their their moonshine in the rafters or in the smokehouse, and they would go out and. You'd, hit on it and they kept it outside so the women wouldn't know they drank <laughs> that's another great tradition that we live so, with in the ozarks this, and we talk about this a little bit and i know for no folks who are just now getting to tune into this we did this episode of the ozark music shop and had you in here and this is kind of where this is all kind of started but rodney's always been known to tell these really great stories and and mitch when he was around oh, too. yeah mitch was just you know the two of these people just had great stories and and what I always found to be the most impressive part of this was, again, we grew up in Colorado. We didn't understand this Ozarks world. And getting to hear them tell, you know, the album that you know, we talked about this before, the Live Almost album, to me, was it. We listened to this so much when we were kids. My dad brought it in to us. Um, he's from New York, you know, uh, New York State, not you, you can talk to him. You're it's allowed a, to talk to him now. It's yeah. a beautiful state. <laughs> it is. But he's from, you know, Pennsylvania, New York, that area. We moved to Colorado. That's where we were all raised. And then we get to hear stuff about stories like uh, talking about uh, uh, the carpet running all the way to the bathroom now. Uh, yeah. You know, yeah. stuff like that. We didn't understand what all that was about or the you know, story of the outhouse and how far it was. And, well, and I, would, I would cringe when Mitch would tell that story about every. You know, but back then, people in the uh, 60s and the late were trying to get away from their roots if they were rural. You know, they didn't want to be associated with that sort of thing, the outhouse. <laughs> I don't really want to be associated with an outhouse either, but that's, uh, well, if that's, that's your thing. I don't know. that. Just talking to you brought it to mind. I don't understand. <laughs> the name. Uh, but, uh, yeah, he would say, you know, and so, you know, everybody knows what an outhouse. If you don't, it's a little house. It sits, you know, out behind the house in this, about 50 yards. And he said, in the wintertime, in the summer, it says 
50 yards too far, but in the summertime, it's a 50 yards, and he would never finish it because he would get the laugh. <laughs> <laughs> but what we tried to, what was really bugging me back then, if, if people will bear with me, was they would take people from the, from the mountains, Ozarks or whatever, back in the 40s in those days, and they would hook them up, you know, the hillbillies, and they would push that whole thing, the Judy Canova thing. Y'all won't remember that, but that was the 40s, and they did that with uh, Roy Cuff and everybody when he did the movies. And they would make hillbillies slightly less than, you know, uh, double-digit IQ. And that always bothered me because it always took away the value system. They never realized that rural people have a greater value system than just about anybody going as far as how they lived their life, what they had to do to survive. And as a kid growing up, because my, my parents, my uncles, they all worked a farm, and they worked hard. They saw life and death right there. It didn't come in a package. You know, waving at you with a smile. Hi, I'm a chicken. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it always bothered me. We got to L.A., you know, they were still trying to do that stuff. And we got to the point we'd learn. If they brought you in and all of a sudden you saw hay bales and uh, uh, the dancers painted up in freckles and the, gr the girls looking like something from Little Abner, we'd turn and walk out say, no, if you want us to do it, you're going to present us right. Well, there was that changeover period, right? Because, I mean, there was some of that, obviously, with the, with the Darlings, and mm. that was part of that hokey hillbilly attitude to a degree. But then you started moving into a new era where people were starting to really, and you were part of that whole. Yeah, and it really didn't bother me too much because I have uncles like that. I'm <laughs> like the Darlings. Yeah. And maybe I'm sure some people do, too. That doesn't mean that they were stupid. You know, my mother always said, if you're quiet, you know, it doesn't mean you're stupid. My mother always said, the empty jug rattles the loudest. <laughs> <laughs> Which in a lot of cases is true, especially in mine. <laughs> but, uh, but, but I get off it, but I just didn't, I didn't like the way Hollywood was treated. And, of course, they, they did that and misrepresented. And, and then we get into the social engineering of what Hollywood has done to everybody. And it, we created an unreal world based on, on Hollywood. I, I need to get off that, don't I? Yes, honey. <laughs> don't scare the children. Don't scare the children, yeah. <laughs> well, he even we took are it. raising <laughs> a sociopathic society. <laughs> They're on their cell phones, talking to each other two feet away. <laughs> no accountability, not looking into each other's eyes. So when reality comes, it's going to be a big surprise. <laughs> so don't be a snowflake. <laughs> and you just saw the writing genius of Rodney Dillard. I just, I didn't, I, I didn't, I just made that up. I just that. watched <laughs> I, I can just tell you right now, there were a bunch of people on Facebook and Instagram that yelled Boomer and shut it off. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you know what? They have no idea what they're missing. <laughs> Save the best for last. That's right. <laughs> Honey, are you a boomer or are you boomed past that? Oh, I boomed past that. <laughs> I was back back in the days before reality became fictitious. Oh. <laughs> and before the insurance, you know, the, insert, the extrasensory bombardment of uh, the electronic messages. Uh huh. I hear one now. <laughs> hey, should we talk about what we've been doing? Do, speaking of the sure. COVID. Oh, the garden. Weather? Garden's looking oh. great, guys. Oh, yeah. I finally got to garden because it's the first year we've been home and that the groundhogs didn't need it because we weren't there. And we've also been writing songs. We just finished the album. Uh, we haven't done the album, but we wrote the songs that made Charlene cry. Yeah. And that took us a few months. And then Rodney's and I wrote a protest song. <laughs> Just in case we could relive the 60s. Of course, in the 60s, I was little and he was... No, never mind. We won't go there. <laughs> yeah. But that's what we've been doing. Writing songs and gardening. And we just got a record deal with Pine Castle Records. I know a lot of you out there, if you're Bluegrass fans, a lot of your favorite groups are on Pine Castle. And this is going to be uh, released digitally the end of August. And then come out hard copy... Uh, the beginning of September, and it's called Old Road New Again. What does that mean? What does that mean? <laughs> and he's got a lot of, we have a lot of friends on there. Yeah. I yeah. think it means they're repaving the road. Yeah, it does. <laughs> I need repaving, trust me. <laughs> so I just got to hear actually a track from it, uh, Rodney. Pull me out to see it, hear some. Um, I don't know how many, uh, 
we, I don't know if we want to get into all of that history of what, where you went after the Dillards and, you know, where the Dillards went. Cause you know more about change. it than I do because well, I've forgotten it. <laughs> I, I know that's not true. But uh, I'm a huge Eagles fan, Don Henley especially. I've been a hit fan of him as a solo artist as well as with the Eagles. And uh, Roddy just showed, played me a couple cuts where Don's singing on those and, and playing – Really cool. Uh, again, part of that sound from the, the Eagles and the Birds, this was the guy kind of responsible for a lot of that stuff. Well, Herb Peterson was on there, and Don's always been in Herbert friends. And, and we just, just, I thought if this was going to be my last sunset, so to speak, if I didn't ever do another album, I wanted to do something sort of bookend an album called Wheat Straw Sweet. There's a lot of people out here who are looking at me like, the, what was that? <laughs> it's, it, uh, it's, it was an album that we did that uh, the Herb Peterson first joined me on. And uh, it's my, one of my favorites. And I thought, I'll book into it with this, you know, I want to say this. And uh, we did. We, we, we said things. It wasn't just High Mountain Squirrel and my wife left me and I'm going to go jump in a pond. <laughs> you know, it's not that kind of an album. Sure. And thank goodness the people who've picked up on Bluegrass, and of course it goes, reflects the culture. And I want to say there's just some, a tremendous amount of Bluegrass talent out there on the planet now. These kids that play the music and love the music for what it is. Amazing. And uh, the fact that a lot of them wanted to retain it, which is a good thing, you know, to retain the music, uh, but don't keep it in the museum and let it get dusty. you got to add what you do and how you feel to the music. So you, if you imitate something too long, it becomes a pastel representation of what it originally started to be. And, but the kids out there are really now uh, making some really good music. It's true. I know it's 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 probably frustrating a lot of the old uh, traditionalists, you know, you know. Seems like well, it's you, always been the way it was. Yeah, you were part yeah. of that. You, know, you, were, <laughs> you were the one frustrating oh. the traditionalists. Yeah, Tell boy, me, yeah. I got all kinds of threats. We're gonna take that guitar and we're gonna turn it into a barbecue. <laughs> Here's my car. It says KKK. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Whoa, we got dark facts. <laughs> Tell them who else is on the album. I'm holding back. <laughs> Tell them who else is on the album with you, honey. Oh, Sam Bush, Andy Lefrit, who plays with Ricky. Absolutely. Skaggs is on it with me, the Whites. Uh, my, who am I leaving? Bernie now? Ledden. Bernie Ledden. Does a, uh, some great banjo work on it. Yeah, and... Uh, Tony um, Ray. Mark Fain on bass. Tony Ray, George Giddens, who are... Dillard. And our bass player, who's a jazz player, who's a doctor in Nashville. Gary Smith. Gary Smith played on it. He does a lot of the intricate. I liked his approach to what that did because it, he surprises you with the licks he plays. You know? Very cool. So we had a lot of people that helped us out on that. Timmy Crouch from down here in Arkansas. And, and George Giddens, did you mention him? Mm -hmm. Anyway, we're, this album comes out at the end of the month, and I hope uh, of some of you folks might want to just, by curiosity, download it off of... Uh, what are they doing? Amazon. The internet. Yeah. Yeah, that, that thing in the air. The internet. What's that? Interweb. Oh, I believe oh, is what they call that. Yeah. yeah. The interweb. Yeah, that's just right. That that uh, the spider web. That vice president invented the internet. That's right. <laughs> quail. Was it quail? No, dole. No, no. But it's no, going to be. pineapple. No. It's what? interesting and a great listen. And Jim has a new project too. Yes, he does. Jim, I must say. Uh, He's, he's, he's with us when I can get him. I have a couple other players who play because he's so busy that a lot of times. But he has a, a whole new album, don't you? I do. I've got a, a new album called Drifting and Dreaming. It's full of the old-time classic American songs. It's got a couple that I wrote. I shared this uh, album with Susan Martin, and um, it's, a, it's a wonderful album. We took Drifting and Dreaming is from 1926, and that, one of my favorite songs, I was raised playing that, singing it with a family band, so we titled it that. It's got bluegrass overtones. It has jazz, uh, just all kinds of great music that I love. And uh, so this is going to be available. You can uh, you can contact us at crystalsandsrecords at gmail.com. And shoot us a shoot us an email. We'll get it hooked to you there. And you can also find it on Amazon, uh, iHeartRadio, and uh, Google Play, and some of that other stuff. Yeah. Well, that's good. I mean, yeah, it's, it's not what you might expect, and it's just his talents uh, for what he's learned all over the years, and it's uh, really a nice nice thing to do. Uh, how much time do we have left? As much time as you in, need. In general uh, or tonight? <laughs> <laughs> Let, well, me Let me see your toe for that expiration date. Let me see your toe for that expiration date. I do date. want to uh, <laughs> take a moment real quick and kind of uh, recap what it is we're doing here tonight. Again, this is Music Can't Be Quarantined. What are we doing tonight? 
Music can't be quarantined, Jeremy. That's what we're doing. Uh, it's a it's a fundraiser to help musicians who are uh, not able to work. And uh, you know, in this case, Rodney wasn't able to work way before COVID nineteen. <laughs> they shut him down quite a while ago. Um, but uh, but seriously, uh, we've started this for local bands. It's now kind of become a national thing. We're going to see a lot more great national bands. Uh, I hope you guys are out there supporting local businesses. This is when they need you the most. We'd love it if you guys are, if you're calling out for dinner or drinks, call a local restaurant, uh, pick up, uh, do that. Uh, your local businesses in general, this is when they need you the most. Uh, and really get out there and support them. Of course, we would love it if you support us too. Um, that would be wonderful. But that, that's not the point. The point was to get uh, out there to make sure that you guys know that we really do need those. And uh, be on the lookout. We're going to have a lot of other really, really great acts in here. I've been getting a lot of calls, um, so I'll be introducing those uh, as we kind of roll along. Um, but again, fundraiser.com slash forward slash Dillard Tip Jar uh, is where you can put those in there. Every dollar that you guys put in there is not going to us. It's going to the artists. We, keep, we don't keep any of that. We found the lowest uh, priced uh, fundraising app to do this on. And uh, besides the credit card fees and stuff, every dollar that you guys put in there is going to the artists that you're watching. In this case, it's the Dillards tonight. So, uh, again, thank you guys so much for being with us tonight. And uh, I'll get back to letting Rodney tell you more Let's about more what songs. he's going to talk about. Yeah, yeah, I, that's great. And uh, you guys, I, when it comes to being sincere, it gets tough. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, you guys are doing something I think is really important. And you, it, it isn't self-serving. You guys are not, it's not an IME situation. And what you're doing, I think, is very, very important to keep the music alive and keep that communication between people happening. Because we cannot get away from that. Well, it's, and it's going to be hard. You know this as well oh, as I do. Oh, my goodness. Right now, these bands can't, have no place to go. And finding out where the music industry is going to go from here, this is a whole new world. And it's going to yeah. be a while till these folks are able to continue to make money. So yeah, this, and this is a lot of them, this is their only livelihood. Yeah, so. that's up for grabs. This, uh, the paradigm has changed. And the new normal will be people adjusting to what the uh, new normal is. The old people like me will be fighting it all the way. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's a good thing of, and tips because uh, I want to make sure that the – I got to tell you this. He has a parakeet that has an identity problem. <laughs> <laughs> it thinks it's a butterfly. <laughs> <laughs> and he keeps beating his head against the light bulb. And we just want to make sure that he can take care of that parakeet and give that parakeet what it needs so it knows who it is. Who it is. Realize at all its time. identity. Yeah. So that's that's really important. And heart string huh? pulling story right there. <laughs> There's a heart string puller right there. Oh, it pulls you mine. Sit on top of the world. Oh golly, you want me to do that? Well, no, not necessarily. Uh, well, not if you're going to react like that. Yeah, I'll really. tell you that much. <laughs> okay, let's do uh, rain in here this morning. Is that a good? One? Uh, sure. Grandpa Jones. Always love I'm gonna Grandpa. Can Jones. I stand F? up there and sing between you two? Because sure. I can't hear. Yeah, come on. I always like Grandpa uh, Jones and stuff. I did a couple of TV shows with him. Here I go name dropping in. Back when Johnny Case had his uh, show uh, on CBS, we did a couple of his shows. And and Grandpa, that's where I first met Grandpa, I think. And, and I remember him telling this story to Earl Scruggs. Do I have time to tell us or are people getting go bored? For it. Uh, we can't hear him. Well, you can't tell if they're shutting off the TV either. <laughs> but uh, he... Uh, he called Earl up one time, just raising Cain. He says, somebody has stolen my cow. I have lost a cow. I can't, I've looked for that cow for two weeks. And he said, I, some, I don't know where it is. I've been looking. So about a week later, Scruggs saw him at the opera, and he said, Grandpa, did you find that cow? He said, no, oh, I never found that cow. He said, I, I've looked all over. I know somebody stole my cow, and I'm going to find out who stole my cow. And Earl said, well, okay. Earl gets a call one night, and it's Grandpa. He said, yeah, Grandpa. I said, what's going on? He said, well, I finally found that cow. He said, well, where was it? He said, in the freezer. <laughs> <laughs> this is raining here this morning. <laughs> Yes. 
Mississippi toward the Silver Sea. Million raindrops falling close to me makes all the streams and rivers bloody as can be. It's raining. that old song. I like those old songies like that. Well, I, we're going to try to wind it up here with uh, with a song. And once again, uh, you know, really support this show. It's real important to all of us who like music, period, music. And uh, just just keep on supporting the people who come in here because I've, I've, my heart goes out to those folks who spent their whole lives learning the craft and doing what they do. And uh, all of a sudden, they cannot perform it. And this is going to help that a lot. And uh, I also want to say if my daughter, our daughter, <laughs> yeah, you are the mother of my child, aren't you? Last time I checked. Uh, uh, hi, Rachel. Did, hi, and Rachel Maddie and Maddie and, and Bryant, Bryant, you guys. And my son, who's in Bristol, Tennessee, is probably now either out on one of the dangerous rivers in a kayak or he's patrolling because he's a uh, captain in the Sheriff's Department in the Tri-Cities, Bristol, Tennessee area. And uh, so you know how I feel about those things. So we're going to do, uh, what do you want to do? Is someone is asking for the biggest whatever if you fill up to it, we're just asking for that. Oh, of course Rachel is. Would. Oh, Rachel, boy, you're always putting me to the test, aren't you, kiddo? Well, I'm wearing out, kids, so uh, I will do something else. And how about the Andy Griffith Show song? They had a request for that. Or you wanted to do something else? Why did I bring you with me? <laughs> okay. I Griffith. asked myself that. Okay, the Andy Griffith Show song. Okay, what key did we do that in? That you got me started now. Well, I don't know what key you sing it in. Huh? Do a solo. Who said? Probably me, maybe. I can't remember. E maybe? <laughs> e maybe. E maybe. How you, how, how's your signature that? E <laughs> question mark? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, gosh, you guys. I don't that know. Was that was an exclamation point. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was an expletive deleted. <laughs> Bayberry fans out there, uh, this is for you. It's just an old hat, all covered with age, keeping the sun off your face. And the old leather band keeps your sweat from your brow, and the crown provides the that old hat represents a 
simple lie for people to time to care. Maybe it would remind us to love one another if we get us that there. When you try on the Mayberry hat, you may find life's not so bad. Seldom broken And the world stops spinning so fast So take a step into the past You may find some treasures at last You'll be more forgiving And really start living When you try on There's no magic in that old hat And the grass has grown over the road But the town is still there And love is the map That will lead us back home If you try on a Mayberry hat Held and broken And the world stops spinning So fast so take a step into the past You may find some treasures at last You be more forgiving And we may start living When you try on the Mayberry And really start living when you try on the Mayberry hat. There you have it, folks. See you next time in the next place. <laughs> this same time, this station. It's the Lone Ranger. <laughs> but thank you, and thank you guys very much for putting thank up Thank you for coming being with us. Yeah, this is awesome. This was a whole bunch of fun. I hope you guys had fun with us tonight. Uh, it was great to have these folks in here. It was great to get to pick with Jeremy and Jason again. I haven't got yeah. to play with them in forever. That was my least favorite That's right. <laughs> <laughs> that was a, that was I like really to play fun. with them. They never like playing with me. So there you go. But it was great to have you guys with us tonight. Again, uh, get, get out there and support your local businesses. Get out there and donate. We sure do appreciate all that you are doing. Be, and, be uh, safe. Do just, it safely. Yeah, do it safely. Do it. Be careful Amy, out there. It is, a, it, is a, it is a crazy time right now. Um, so be, definitely be safe. Um, one thing I do want to mark is this will be uh, val uh, alive for what? Are we doing this again? 14 for days. 14 days. All right. So. so that fundraiser account is, a, is valid for 14 days from tonight. So if you're catching this later on, you can still donate to it. We would love for you to do that. In fact, uh, share it tonight. Make a watch party. Sit there and chat with your friends. If you found anything that you loved, uh, do it. If you found things that you didn't love, still get on there and chat and talk to people Whoa. and donate. Yeah, that's how it works. Well, you know, I, you know, there's one thing I want to leave these folks with, and I, I, I do this at the risk of being sued by various, you know, whomever. Get ready to but if you want to get rid yes. of this virus, eat possum. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here, folks. <laughs> eat more possum. Anyway, yep. thank you all for being with us. We will catch you guys next time. Again, uh, watch Ozark Music Shop every Sunday night, KOZL. New episodes are starting right now. Last week was... Uh, Darren Vincent, we got new ones this week. I don't Caleb know what they are. Caleb Darty. Caleb Darty. Uh, great, great band on there. And also subscribe and like to both the uh, YouTube and Facebook pages for the Ozark Music Shop and for the Acoustic Shop. And you'll get to hear about more of this kind of stuff as well as the Ozark Music Shop TV show. So until next time, see you guys later. Have a great one. Bye. <laughs>
Something in A. One, two, three, four. 